One of the things that's really helped me a lot is I love solving problems. And I believe, you know, in engineering, you can always solve a problem. And I think that's actually true in business as well. My name is Lisa Su, and I'm CEO of AMD. Lisa Su is the CEO of AMD. She's an MIT PhD. She's a Taiwanese immigrant. And she really saved this historic Silicon Valley company, bringing it back from the dead and making it one of the most important chip companies in the industry. I was born in Taiwan and I came to the U.S. when I was two with my parents. And, you know, growing up, my father used to quiz me with math tables at the dining room table. So that's how I first got into math. And when I was young, I liked to actually take things apart. My brother had a toy remote controlled car and it stopped working. And I was wondering, why did it stop working? And so I opened it up, tried to see what was going on. And there was like a, a wire that was loose and, and we were able to get it back working again by putting it back together. I went to the Bronx High School of Science in New York and I was surrounded by you know, people who loved math and science and technology. I will say there was a part of me that wanted to be a concert pianist, but I don't think I was good enough to do that, so I ended up being an engineer. What I was really inspired by when I was a freshman at MIT is um, I went into a semiconductor line for the first time and I saw how you made chips and that was just so cool to me. That's really how I ended up being in semiconductors having a, a summer job when I was a, a first year college student. I was at IBM in the mid 90s. We were working at the forefront of semiconductor devices. Semiconductors were so interesting to me. I mean, I love the idea that you could, you know, really make something that works. You know, all of these transistors, these tiny little things that you could really put together in a chip. And so we worked on some of the newest innovations, things like copper interconnects and, you know, new ways to make devices faster and, and less power and denser. In those days, people always said, you know, is Moore's law ending? Are we not going to be able to make devices smaller? And, and, and so much of the challenge was how could we keep increasing performance and increasing capability while also making these devices smaller so we could put more transistors on a single chip. So that was the key thing. And you know, we had a great team that was working on that. I joined AMD in 2012. I always knew about AMD as a important company in the industry, and it was an opportunity to work on a bigger platform. So I was you know, very interested in joining AMD. There are a lot of things happening at that point in time. There was this, this whole revolution of, you know, where were PCs going? What was happening in mobile phones? What was gonna be the next big tech going on? So I wanted to be at a company that really would work at the bleeding edge of technology. When Sue came into the role, she had this really gargantuan task ahead of her. The company's stock had plummeted, a quarter of the workforce had been laid off, and she's really been able to pull off one of the greatest turnarounds in Silicon Valley history. Sue really boiled down her turnaround strategy to three things, building great products, focusing on customer relations, and the third thing is simplifying the company. So focusing on strengths like PC chips and data centers. In the early days when I joined AMD, it was actually about getting customers and large partners to trust us and trust that we could develop the best technology in the world and that they could trust their roadmaps and you know, their business with our technology. You know, what I would say is, look, it's gonna take us five years, but we will be best in class in the industry and we're gonna do it in these three steps with our new Zen architecture and our new microprocessors. And so it really is about a track record and doing what you say you're gonna do and ensuring that we meet our commitments. The people who know her also points to this unique mix of technical ability and people skills. And that's kind of what's driven her success, being able to bring people together, problem solve, and focus on more than just the business. What I've really enjoyed about being an engineer is really building products. That's what I love in life. It's really, you know, how do you build great products? How do you see where your products go and, you know, really make the world a better place? And the role of a CEO, you know, that's one piece of it. That's not all pieces of it. We have many stakeholders. We have our employees, we have our board, our shareholders, our partners. And so it's really balancing not just the technology, but also balancing and ensuring that, you know, we are you know, really meeting all of our stakeholders expectations. 
The thing about semiconductors and you know, developing you know, chips is you really do have to make bets three to five years in advance. And you have to think about, okay, where is the industry going? And how are we going to bring you know, sort of new ideas to an industry that really has lots and lots of great companies and lots of smart people? So you know, at AMD, we spend a lot of time thinking about where is technology going in the future? What's gonna be really important? What are the limiting factors? And how do we do something that nobody else can do? I've been in the semiconductor industry for the last, you know, 30 years and, you know, sort of in the beginning, people didn't really understand what semiconductors were for. They were kind of like underneath the surface, you know, you knew something about chips and something about computers, but not exactly, you know, why they were important. I think what's been amazing over the last few decades, and especially even over the last three or four years, people now understand that semiconductors are essential. Like you need chips in everything that you do, in every part of your life, in every part of the business, in every part of how we deliver, you know, great healthcare and, you know, great technology and great capabilities. And I think that's what makes it cool is that, you know, semiconductors are now something that everyone thinks about as being super important for our daily lives. We love seeing our products and technologies really make a difference in everyone's lives. I'm not sure I'm ready to talk about legacy. I think we have a lot to do right now to continue pushing the envelope on technology. Touching billions of people with AMD technology would be a wonderful thing. <laughs>